Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and I like the very end before a next set comes out because I tend to run into a bunch of cards that I realize haven't ever been played before and I try to make these cards work. And so Lower Hole Excavation is one of those cards. Two mana enchantment at the beginning of your end step, mill a card. If it's a land mill this way, you gain one life. Otherwise, it does one damage to each opponent. So if I mill over anything that's not a land, sweet, I get one damage to face. It's not a huge amount of damage, but uh, it can end up adding up if we have a lot of these kinds of effects. A lot of effects that are dealing one point of damage over and over again. We also have Rolling Vortex in the format as well, which deals one damage to each player on their upkeep, so it deals damage to us as well. Low Hurdle Excavation actually kind of cancels that out with the occasional time that it gains life. Uh, and I, I realize we actually have a few other ways to be just doing damage every single turn. Uh, there, there's some other creatures like Tap for damage and can untap, that kind of stuff. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but we have Rowan as well, Scholar of Sparks. The plus one ability deals one damage to each opponent. If you draw three or more cards this turn, she deals three damage to each opponent instead. So I was, I was realizing if we have like four of these effects out on the battlefield, that kind of damage adds up really, really quickly. And one of the biggest issues with our more like burny type of decks is that we have to send so much damage at face that we either can't take care of creatures or we have to make the choices. To, okay, do I deal with this creature or do I send it face? And with these just effects that are happening constantly, you actually don't need as much card draw to make sure that you hit the hit their face all the time. You can have this just a little bit of damage every single turn. If you have enough of them, it's, you know, it's three damage every turn or a lightning bolt or, you know, or we can get up to four or more if we start drawing cards as well. And so that's kind of the idea with this deck is that using Lower Hold Excavation to kind of turn it into a long game strategy for burn while still having a lot of burn that can go towards face and make it a little bit faster. But we also have the ability to interact if we need to especially with all the mono white decks out there ruling vortex turning off lifelink actually makes it really really awesome then we have a few other cards in here just to kind of make it fun make sure it's good of course bone crusher giant which is i know it's annoying but we it's good i wanted to play radiant scroll wielder as well four mana two four instant in sorcery spells you control have lifelink at the beginning of your upkeep exile an instant or sorcery card at random from your graveyard you may cast it this turn if a spell uh, cast this way would be put into your graveyard exile instead so basically we get to have an, a little bit of card draw with this card. Everything gets lifelink, which means that we can keep our life total a little bit higher, not worry about creatures swinging in at our face. But Lower Hold Excavation is also milling over a lot of our burn spells at the same time, you know, here and there. And so we should be able to have plenty of these burn spells in our graveyard to then be able to recast them. And it's a little bit of card draw that way. Then we also have Ox of Agonis, which just because we are milling already, hopefully we can run into these a couple times. It's our main way of drawing cards. I initially had more more copies of this, and you probably should take out Radiant Skull for this, but I want to play this for fun. I, I, I want to stress that because a lot of people don't understand that I play Magic for fun and not just because I want to play the absolute best possible thing. I want to take a Lower Hold Excavation and make it into a decent deck but it still has to be fun. And so that's what we're trying to do here. The other side of this too, you can pay five to exile a creature card from your graveyard and create a tapped three, two uh, red and white spirit creature token. Unfortunately it is tapped, so you can't block, but it is a way for us to be getting in some extra damage on the board as well. And that's basically it guys. So let's go ahead and dive into the gameplay, see how it does for us and wish me luck. Here we go. Before we dive into the gameplay, a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. Spoiler season for the next set is right around the corner. So if you want to hear my analysis on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be aware of when new things are coming out with spoiler season all right let's dive into the gameplay all right i'm against trs and we have lower hold excavation so this is good and we're going to keep this so in general what our deck wants because we have slaying fires in the like in this deck we actually want to be playing out spikefold hazard basically every time that we can on turn one yeah it means we don't get in for shock we don't get to be able to respond to stuff as quickly which luckily now we're just fine um and we want to make sure that we are playing out as many uh, white sources as possible or sorry as many red sources as possible and then just have enough white to be able to play these things out here and there we want three red sources one white source that is basically what we're shooting for all right lord excavation is at the beginning of the end step okay end step we milled so we milled over bone crusher giant bummer but we got him and we have vorclex uh yeah we have a few things here that are pretty good all right so slake fire is a way to kill that now i should have played this out on red oops uh play out mountain uh i can go roll eruption and hit that or i can just start building up more of the board here um let's go another excavation that's what we came to play we're gonna see if we can make it work and pass the turn 
Killing this right away just means they get ramp out of it as well. So we can at least try to take some of the damage. If we do end up gaining some life from lands as well along the way, this doesn't do as much damage. Now it's terrifying. Okay, yeah, I'm completely terrified now. This is bad. This is very, very bad. Um, hmm. It gets one counter automatically. Yeah, okay. So we have to deal five points of damage. We have uh, Rolling Vortex and Shock. So we're okay. We're okay. It's, it's fine. Let's hope they don't have Snakeskin Veil. They're definitely going to be playing Snakeskin Veil with us. All right, down to 15. Uh, well, crap. Red mana. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so Mountain, uh, Royal Eruption, Shock. I think that's our only option to make sure that we <laughs> stay in this game a little bit. So yeah, Royal Eruption. See if they have Snakeskin Veil. They have some sort of response, and that's terrifying. If they have it here, I don't know how we come back. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. I mean, I honestly, I don't know if we can come back from this point. We, we unfortunately don't have the greatest of removal at this point. <laughs> this is just big, beefy, stompy stuff, which I kind of like. Uh, they have to be giving some way to give... Uh, trample or something as well right let's just go ahead and get this out there and we're done all right <laughs> yeah we're out of here next one all right i think it's zex is that a, like a tm thing up there that's really cool all right uh two mana keep this play out the snarl past the turn we have Lorehold Excavation into Rowan, so we have some incremental damage available. All right, so Roll Erupt or Lorehold Excavation past the turn. Ah, oh, just getting a life. Bummer. We actually really needed that mountain. <laughs> uh oh, I I did forget this is on the end step, which does sometimes mess us up. Um, I I am going to go ahead and just start throwing damage at face just a little bit. Down to 18. Down to 17. Pass the turn. All right. Skyclave Apparition. Uh, that's kind of okay. Okay. Sexual Smashing. Play it tapped. Royal Eruption is only sorcery speed. There's a lot of sorcery speed uh, burn in this deck, which is pretty awful. But we also get to kind of play around these things as well. We're going to be playing lots of stuff on our turn. <laughs> this is definitely like a against the odds type of deck, by the way. Like there's, there's not a whole lot of hope that I have for this. <laughs> but it's possible. Rip apart. Uh, yep, let's just go ahead and see if we can kill this right now. This might be a sot coming. I'm not sure if they really care to stop this over other things. Swing in. Behold the multiverse. Brazen Barber. Okay, that's fine. All right, so Brazen Barber comes in and kills Rowan right away. Um, and so it's not a huge help. But it's kind of our only play. I don't want to be just throwing out Slaying Fire right away. I mean, getting getting in for four points of damage can be nice. It also makes everything cost a little bit less, which can, which can be nice. The awkward part about this is that when Rowan is out, Slaying Fire can never be a four damage uh, spell because we have to have three mana to spend on it. We never have the three mana spend on it, but it becomes a, a lightning. Uh, is it lightning strike? What's the whatever it is, which can be good. All right, Radiant Scroll Wilder, go. So now we'll have Rip Aparts or Real Eruptions. Vanishing Light, just kidding, now we'll have nothing. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, down to 18. I think now we just start throwing damage at phase here. Um, yeah, we have Ox of Agonis online, but I want to wait until I have the damage dealt. So pass the turn. Now we need to kill that. Can't let them gain life there. Saw it coming. Negate. Rude. Yeah. Forge as a card. It's a lot of lands. All right. Kill this now. I'm hoping to just not let them have enough potential cards for counter spells. Yeah, okay, they had it all. They drew into it. Uh, I don't think we can win now. Linvala, yep. Interesting deck. Youthful Valkyrie in here as well. Is this just... Hmm. Ruling Vortex is interesting. Can't play that and the ox, though. I think we need to just need to find something decent here. A shock at least lets us have a chance of killing Brazen Borrower. Well, there we go. Ruling Vortex. We're we're done though, right? Like there's not I mean Oxygonus gives us a little bit of hope. <laughs> Just because if we find if we find enough pieces of removal, it can be good. But yeah, that's lethal. So there we go. Dead. Completely dead. All right, up against MVT. And we're going to keep trying to make this deck work. Um, not an awful hand. It doesn't have any of the lore hold excavations, things like that. I'm not sure if I want to be going down to less cards, though. Uh, but we can we can get a better hand than that. This is OK. Keep this, drop a, I think it's Spike-filled Hazard. Actually, you know, it's it's the Scroll Wielder. Is it? Let's go Spike-filled Hazard. I'm going to play out this other one anyway. So the other one at that point is just a one damage spell where I, I feel like I can get more value out of this by playing the other Slaying Fire or something. Okay, Real Eruption. Uh, try to play as much red until I actually need the white mana. Hold on to the pathway. Okay, down to 17 past the turn. Clarion Spirit. Alright, let's go ahead and shock you. White mana past the turn. Now I have the three red for Slaying Fire, Scroll Rilder. We're good. All I can do is stomp. They're stuck on two lands. This is probably their best card that they have. This is uh, probably the Magecraft deck. Let's go ahead and kill this. Pass the turn. Getting out of Bonecrusher Giant as well is decent. Everything in the graveyard kills this. And it gives us lifelink as well. So let's go ahead and throw that out there. That lets us cast a one mana spell, hopefully, and then get a Bone Crusher Giant out on the, at the same time. All right. Apparition. That's annoying. All right. So I can Apparition. I kill this, this Skyclave Apparition and then block the Alone and Light Scribe potentially. Pass the turn. All right, they attack in. Sling fire, pay the adamant cost so they can't just buff it real quick. They might have like a protection spell though. That would be bad.
village riots came. So we still get it, that's fine. We get to kill the alone and light scribe. Uh, and I think that we probably need to kill this Sedgemore Witch as well. And I need one more land for all this stuff to start working better. Actually, I can play out Rowan and Stomp. So let's do that. Rowan. Don't have time to study. The fight um, let's attack in here. Stomp the witch. Take action, pay the three. Tick up. All right, down to 12, pass the turn. All right, come on, land. Let's use thirst, okay. Uh, we might also want to just start putting some damage for its face. Like, I'm not sure how much life link, life gain they actually have here. All right, I can Slaying Fire play out a Bone Crusher Giant. Down to 11. It brings me down to 12, but I have a Bone Crusher Giant. Um, I've gotten rid of a lot of their stuff. If they keep just hitting good stuff here, though, that's pretty crazy. Three damage to face, get him down to eight. These guys gain them life. Yeah, I think we need to get rid of the Sedgemore Witch. So we're going to have to pay three life there, take action, and then pay three more life here with the smashing. Yeah, it's kind of painful, but I, I think it's worthwhile to have this out. Pass the turn and protect our Rowan a little bit more. Gosh, dang, they just don't ever stop having action. I mean, I guess I kind of have been as well, but for the love. Yeah, finally something completely dead. Tick up. Down to 10, pass the turn. Wow, man. Just always has stuff. Uh, that's lethal if they realize the swing in at face. Okay, yeah. We're, we're dead. Sounds good. <laughs> Gosh dang it. All right, up against Garrett Shadow and Royal Eruption. Oh, we, we have some decent cards in this one. We don't have any of our enchantments that we want to have, but, you know, it's all good. I, I think in general, we lead off with Spikeful Hazard if it's in our opening hand. Uh, and then try to find other ones later on for value. Unless we have like three or four lands in hand already. But we're good. Up against the Orion deck. Mulligan in like crazy. That's a good sign. Let's see. Yeah, between Lorehold Excavation... Um, Rolling Vortex and Rowan. Those are our main cards that ping in damage all the time. So we should be able to find a couple of those just off the top deck, hopefully at some point. And that's the dream, right? Um, do we just go ahead and throw damage at face? We have no clue what's going on, but I, I think we do. We have Rip Apart for removal and creatures, so we want to be throwing this stuff towards face as much as possible. That's a good play for the next turn. Actually, wait, this is instant speed, so pass. Treacherous Blessing. Ooh, more damage. I mean, more card job, but more damage is nice, at least. Let's go ahead and... Hey, the Adamant. Um... Do I want to go Scroll Wilder or do I want to start throwing more damage at face? Let, let's try out the Scroll Wilder. It's another two points of damage if they don't have blockers. They might have to spend some stuff to remove this as well.
Okay, Doom Foretold. All right, um, we have Rip Apart. So this is a little bit annoying. We lose this guy, but we can also rip apart and make sure they keep the Treacherous Blessing. Um, so we want to hit... Ah, we hit the Slaying Fire. All right, a little bit awkward. Play Planes, play Rip Apart. Play Slaying Fire only for three. They keep their treasure its blessing and they don't get a chance to gain life. We only have two planes in this deck, but I feel like I keep running into more often than I want to. Maybe it's go down to one. I, I was also debating on throwing in the snow lands for faceless havens and stuff, but when we're playing slaying fire, we want to make sure that we have the three red mana and even just having the planes makes it hard enough. And so maybe we can take out the two planes for two faceless havens, turn all the mountains into snow covered mountains. Uh, and then we just have eight white sources, um, which may actually be enough. All right, pass the turn. Let them do as much damage to themselves with this treacherous blessing as possible. Omen of the sun. Yeah, okay, gain some life with it. That's annoying. Yeah, up to 10. Luckily, these guys don't have lifelink as well. Down to 18. Yorion. Ah, they get it again. All right, fine. We'll throw it at face. Down to five. Back up to seven. Down to three. If we find a rolling, a royal eruption, then we win. Ah. Oh. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. Um, we still throw this damage at phase. Do I do it now when I can guarantee get it through? I think I do. I, I want the least amount of chance of being countered here. Pass the turn. I mean, counters do also hurt them with Treacherous Blessing, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully they didn't find more Omen of the Suns. Scries. They know that they only need one counter spell now. I guess that's the one issue with holding up the shocks is I could have like had multiple spells at the same time though if they just counted the one important one. It's not that big of a deal. Oops. If we had found a Lorehold Excavation earlier, we would have gotten probably as much damage uh, as a Shock or whatever. Like, we've had enough turns. And so, honestly, getting those out on in the early turns is a huge deal. Yeah, the Doom Foretold for the Radiant Scroll Wielder was also really annoying. Okay, brings Yorion to hand. They need the ability to gain life the turn that they deal any damage to themselves. All right, that's it. Do you have a counter spell? Sacrifice Scry 2. Whew, man, good game. Nice. Oh, yes, we got there. <laughs> we got there against a really good deck, too. We finally won a game. And it was against a Doomfirst whole deck. So, you know, this deck's clearly amazing. 
<laughs> All right, up against Davidius. And we do have four lands, kind of. Um, we'll keep this one. Spikefield Hazard tapped into Pathway, into Excavation. Yeah, that's right. We're playing that kind of stuff. And this is also why we have lots of uh, Spikefield Hazards and Surgical Smashings is because those have the chance to do more damage to their face instead of just getting its life with lands. And we like that. All right, so... Satchel Smashing actually can come in really handy here. We already have our one white source that we need. Um, Spikefield Hazard can kill this. So let's... Incidents and speed. So pass the turn. Gain some life. It can kill it without it gaining life is what it's what's nice. All right. Um, I also might just throw the slaying fire at face. Even for three mana, because I get to have a uh, the scroll wielder on the next turn and have the three mana for it to be other stuff for the later turn. So to take damage. They're definitely playing the um, Peer into the Abyss combo. Life gain actually helps us a lot. Ox of Gonus into the graveyard, also nice. This actually takes things out of the graveyard, though, so it's a little bit awkward. Murder Rider deals two to their face. All right, Rolling Vortex is actually going to be pretty sweet here. Take one. Oh, resolve. All right, so Rolling Vortex, Lorehold Excavation. Do I want to play out the Spikefield Hazard to have Oxyphagonus? Yes, I do. All right, down to 10. I mean, our life total is not very high, so it's still a little bit of a, of a race here. But we'll we'll try. Environmental sciences. Gain some life. This is the card I forgot about that other time. I forget that this gains life as well. We have to kill Scavenger. Okay, perfect. We found the thing to kill Scavenger. How about that? Okay, yeah, you're dead. Um eight cards in the graveyard, so we can bring back an Ox of Agonis. We get rid of the other one. But I think that's probably better. Oh, wait, no, we have exactly eight, so we can't actually do it. So, yep, pass the turn. Some life. Down to 10. We're not getting there quick, and they're getting up to the Peer into the, peer into the Abyss mana speedily. Yeah, this is the card that's annoying. If we hit a land, we're still kind of okay because we can stop the life gain. But we're still taking enough damage that it's terrifying. Pass to my turn. Damage for ourselves. Shock. Not enough. Not good enough. Um, we have to stop them from gaining life as well. We did mill more stuff, so we have this Ox of Agonis. Um... Do I shock now? Or do I hold it up so that I can have Slaying Fire as a potential? I also have a chance to draw some cards. I, I think I go for this Ox of Agonis. Um, I'm just debating if I want to shock this right now or not um, to be able to have a chance for other things. Um, let me hold up full control and I can decide here in a little bit. So get rid of lands and creatures. Because we, oh wait, that's all of our Radiant Scroll Builders. Yeah, so those don't matter. doesn't matter at all any, anymore. So just everything, right? All right, so um, this resolves while it's on the stack. Do I wait and see if I have a Slaying Fire? I could also hit a land and a Slaying Fire. So that also takes away all of our stuff in the graveyard. Let's, um, we still got to hold up Rolling Vortex. So let's, let's actually go face with it. I just realized with this... We're in a little bit better shape.
Oh gosh, that takes that does a lot of damage, doesn't it? Yikes. Um <laughs> crap. <laughs> All right. Past the turn. I mean their life total is pretty low, and we can still gain some life here. They take one. Down to six. Attacking in there, wow. Okay, block here. Can't gain life this turn. Still taking a punch. Oh, Ruling Vortex kills us, doesn't it? Oh, I forgot. They got the five. Right. We draw a card and we do this, so... Throw this at face. Stop on the upkeep. Yeah, we're dead to Underworld Dreams and Rolling Vortex. I needed to kill the Nighthawk Scavenger. I tried to throw damage at face instead, uh, forgetting that we would have to discard. Well, yeah, we just had too many things going to the graveyard. Card types in the graveyard. Do we really have that many card types? Yes, we do. Draw a card. See if we can gain life with this. Yeah, no. <laughs> um. <laughs> Go, spirit. Yay. Good game. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, that was fun, though. Uh, I, I think there was a potential way for us to win there. They, they had a lot of really good stuff. Um, on that turn, if we had killed the Nighthawk Scavenger instead, we would have kept our life total a lot higher. We could have stopped them from gaining life with Murder Strider and held up just like a, a kind of a stop here with Oxygonus. They could have killed stuff, but then they would have been a little bit lower. Uh, with what we drew, could we have won? I think we could have. What did I draw off the Oxygonus again? It was... Uh, another it was stompy boy that so i could have shocked and then i had the land for the stompy boy um so yeah bummer it wasn't a guarantee that it was going to work out for me though just by playing the shock at the at him and so i tried to go for the the most the best chance we just filled too many card we filled the grave over too many uh different card types all right, guys. So is this deck good? Absolutely not. Was it fun? Yeah, I think it was pretty fun. And that's what we came to do is to have fun and try out a new card. So Lord of Luxivation, I do feel like I played a lot of things wrong there where I, we could have done maybe a little bit better. But I think in general, you're not going to be winning with this deck very much. Uh, it's, just, it's just a little bit too slow. There's a lot of decks that just win on the spot or have enough value in it that they can outpace us. There's enough ways to gain life that... Rolling Vortex, we have to have mana up all the time, and there's enough ways to gain life that it kind of makes it awkward. Um, Radiant Scroll Wilder, I actually liked as a card. Like, it was like, okay, that was actually a decent turn four play. The issue was is that every single time people had removal for it immediately because it was our first creature that we played, and everyone always keeps at least one piece of removal in their opening hand. You know, or at least they try to. Sky Cave Apparition was really annoying. In some ways, being able to turn that into a 4-4 four four creature was nice for us, but then they had removal for that thing as well. And so... I think you take this out and maybe just have better. I don't, I don't even know, guys. It, it, it depends. I feel like there are going to be times that this card is like a, a superstar in, in the deck. We did get like one rolling eruption out of it the one time or whatever. <coughs> and so it wasn't the absolute worst, but it's definitely not amazing. Um. Anyway, yeah, th those are the cards that we played. It was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it and had fun along with me. Uh, I know it's more fun to, to have more games won, but... You know what? It's all good. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much and bye-bye.